statewide candidates. We don't even have a federal race candidate president. So thank you all for coming and investing a couple hours into yourself and your community. We are going to go in order that people sign in. Prayer of you can sign in allegedly. I am an attorney at Thomas and Davis PC. We will be going in order on the side of the sheet. So, just a little point of order. We will be speaking for about five minutes each. Erica, our first vice president of the National Council of Labor Women in the Cabs section, will be the timekeeper. You can say whatever you like in five minutes. This is your chance, okay? So first, we'll have Joel Tibido. Currently, he's the Director of International Audits, the position he's running for is Senate C-43. And Joel is the
area, uh, great people, and it's all about how do we connect and make things happen. And also, uh, folks don't understand, during that time period, we had 9-11, Iraqi, Afghanistan, we had two government shutdowns. We also had the Great Recession, where you lost close to 60 to 70 percent of your home values. But guess what? County government still had to operate. And so I tell people, I've been your wartime commission, and you still had to provide calm, stability, and experience to make things happen in our south and central cab. And so I look forward to your support of RealLarryJohnson.com. We have information and folks on infrastructure, public safety, healthy and active living. But it's also about how do we make the Cab County even greater in this time that we're doing. We passed the splash, and guess what folks, you're going to average $200 off on your tax for six years, and you're going to have uh, county taxes you're going to have to pay for six years as well. So thank you for this time, we appreciate it, and I look for your vote early as April 30th to May 18th, but my birthday is May 22nd. <laughs> the best birthday present you can give is the results you can see, LJ all the way. Yes. <laughs> Shutting down. 
We need to grow our entrepreneurial base, and we also need to grow jobs in this area that are conducive to the people who live here. We need to invest in our career technology programs. We need to invest in our, um, in our, in our technical schools. In order for us to prepare the workforce for tomorrow, that is right there on our doorstep. Manufacturing is moving back here. They're making blockbuster movies right here in this area, but those jobs are not seen by people who live here. We're not training folks for those jobs. There's still imported people from California and New York to do those jobs. Those jobs should be filled by people here. And lastly, I was the chair of the Governor's Commission on the City of Stonecrest. I have fought for this community for years. I fought for us to have control of our local government. I fought for us to have good and inclusive um, conversation with our constituents so that we can effectively govern. I want to see in place a government that is responsive to the needs and the will of the people. I will fight for you. I will represent you. And I will deliver. Joel Thibodeau is the name to know. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, for a little bit of cohesiveness, when there are candidates in the same race, then we will go out of order for the sign-in sheet. And we do have State Senator Tanya Anderson. Also. Good evening and greetings. Greetings, greetings. It is so wonderful to be here um, on this evening. I wanted to um, thank the NCNW camp, which I am a member, for hosting this event. Um, and it is it's always good to, to be in a place where um, like minds and, and, and like hearts are working for the same um, agenda. So again, my name is Tanya Anderson, and I am the State Senator for City District 43, which covers a portion of the cab on Phil and Newton. Um, I started uh, public service in 2006 as a city council member, and then mayor, um, state rep, and now state senator. I have developed relationships over the years. I have secured federal funding. I have um, built a low to moderate income housing development for uh, families. And I have um, continued those relationships over the, over the years. As um, a state senator, I have also secured funding, state funding, for um, behavioral development, for education, still fighting for our teachers, coach, still fighting for um, um, education and to have that support in the classroom. Um, another thing is that I am an Air Force veteran retired for 22 years. So we are um, continuing the fight for veterans, uh, for veterans to have access, uh, easier access to a lot of what um, is, is um, important to them and important to us. As we know that even now as we are sitting in this room, someone is fighting to secure our borders and fighting to have us in this place of peace. Um, and I will continue to support um, veterans. The, the other thing that we have been working on and fighting for is uh, Medicaid expansion. Uh, the fight continues, it never ends. Um, this has been a, a long, over a decade fight, and this is something that we won't stop until we get to where we need to be. Uh, when we elect the right people um, in the right positions, then we get the right results. Um, the other thing is that I do, um, the relationships that I built in um, the House, on the, local, on the local level, in the House, and now in the Senate, has allowed me to, um, to to continue to move forward with uh, what's important to our communities. Uh, Facebook just came to Newton County. Why can't it come to the camp? It will. We will have jobs in the camp. Um, why, why hasn't um, other things happened in this area? We are continuing to move forward in a progressive manner so that we can have transit, 
Uh, so we can have um, uh, educational uh, support in our educational uh, systems and to have support, um, a strong support in our community. We don't want to uh, see any, anything passed by um, this particular area or this district as I have good relationships, um, as I said in the past, on the local level. The new cities that are, are, are um, in the area, there's not just uh, Lithonia, Connors, Covenant, there's Stonecrest, Porterdale, mm -hmm. Oxford, um, and, and um, we are working to continue to make the I-20 East corridor um, as effective. And, and I sit on the economic development committee, I forgot to mention that, um, that, that is one of the parts of um, making this uh, district uh, very um, vibrant, not just to thrive or, or to survive, but to thrive. Um, another thing is that I sit on um, um, special judiciary, and another thing is that the, the criminal justice reform um, that needs to happen in this state has to happen. Uh, Georgia talks about being the number one state for business. We need to be the number one state for justice and for education and for living wages and, and for uh, education and all those things that matter to keep us uh, vital. My name is Tommy P. Anderson, and I am running for re-election for state senator. I'm getting the eyes on me.
federal government. I'd like to think I've had a little something to do with that. But at any rate, ladies and gentlemen, um, just to keep my own horn for a second, and I don't want to do that, but I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you that, um, you know, a study by the University of Virginia and Vanderbilt University, two uh, professors did a study, and they determined that Hank Johnson was one of the most effective members of the has been found to be within the top four districts in the country. We will learn in May whether or not we are the number one district operation uh, in, the, uh, in the U.S., uh, I mean in the U.S. I mean, 135 Congress people, they're ranking them. We're in the top four. Can you believe that? District four. that, not for me, but for the people who work for me, both in the district office and in the D.C. office. Uh, that's why I was recognized, and that's why my office is recognized. So, um, you know, we're living in chaotic times. We really need uh, experienced leadership in Congress. Now is no time to change. At a time when the president is acting crazy, he's a threat to our national security and he's a threat to our uh, uh, democracy. I know that y'all who have followed me know that I'm not reticent about voicing my displeasure with this administration or with my colleagues in Congress, but yet I'm still one of the most effective members in Congress. I mean, I can't believe that myself. But um, that's a nonpartisan study, by the way. But at any rate, here I am now, after 11 years in Congress, one of the top senior members on the uh, Judiciary Committee. That's the committee through which the impeachment process will proceed. I'm a lawyer. I use my skills as a lawyer to have uh, distinguished myself on the Judiciary Committee. Hi. Okay. <laughs>
so that I may go forward to Washington, D.C. to take the type of representation, the equal representation, that you all deserve, that we all deserve. For far too long, we, as citizens of the 4th Congressional District, have not had an opportunity to hold our elected officials accountable. My vote is your vote. You should know how I'm voting and why I'm voting, however I'm voting, any time that I vote, not as an afterthought. Therefore, on May 22nd, when it's time for you to make your decision, make a decision for proven leadership for the future. You can go to my website, juanparksforcongress.com. That's F-O-R-Congress.com. You can sign up as a volunteer. You can make a donation. And you can help me restore the integrity of not only the Democratic Party, but for the poor congressional district. Well, thank you very much. I had that bill 
you had to have a Bluetooth in your car. That was kidnapped. Matter of fact, it's on the rise <coughs> this year. But whoever would get the credit, at least we can save some lives. That's my thing when I'm serving down in the House of Representatives. You may kidnap from me, but if it's save a life in Georgia, that's fine with me. I'm State Representative Ernest Coach William. America is great. Um, I have some, some of my brochures here. If you like one, you can donate to my campaign anytime you want. I have a truck out there. You can just throw it inside the truck. <laughs> You'll vote again for House District 87, which goes to <laughs> my way to Tucker, Georgia, 285 to Panola Road. Sidewalk to sidewalk. Very germane. Uh, I also represent Pine Lake. That's the city that's in my district. Thank you very much. And if you are in my district, would you raise your hand? Very good. I hope to get your vote again. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Uh, I've taught everywhere from kindergarten all the way up to the university level. I uh, ask for your support for District 90. If you have any questions, just hit me up. I have flyers in that. Thank you.
She had to keep going to court. Then she became the chair of the school board. But as of last year, towards the middle of the year, we fought so hard, health and kept going down. Um, the person who led that effort for me was Representative Tyrone Brooks, along with Representative Sarah Scott. kept going down. Finally, the court ruled in her favor, in all black folks' favor. So as of November 9, 2017, she became the first black female mayor of Quitman, Georgia. And that's because we kept fighting and fighting and we did not give up. So why am I saying all this? You have people in place who are trying to kill our democracy. If you do not believe me, look at everything that's going on in this country. We are going backwards. We have been told that a black person can't win state lives. The very every time I hear someone say that a black person cannot win statewide, do you know what that does to me? It takes me to a time where people didn't think that we should even be allowed to vote. It takes me back to a place that we don't need to be. How do you know a black person can't win statewide? Hi. They're just saying that means that you're racist in, in nature. So anyway, D Doc is having for Because I did run for the police. 
But I had some police officers that stood behind me, stood in my ear. I mean, when I tell you they were nagging me like your wife nagged. But because of them, that's where I am today. Community police and work for And we got to get back to the basics. We got to roll our sleeves up and get back in the community and bridge that gap to let all our young kids know that the police are here. We're not a bad people. We know we are here. Our police aren't bad. I'm, I'm, I'm a testament to, to say that, you know. I'm a walking testament. I coach wrestling at MLK, wrestling at uh, Southwest DeKalb. I recruited my own kids to law enforcement. I know y'all might think that's bad. <laughs> but I worked when they graduated from college and school, I went to do both of them applications. One worked for the sheriff's office and one worked for the Cal police. That's how much I believe in giving back to our community. I didn't leave. I never left. I'm still here. And that's why I'm asking for you to support me in your sheriff's election in 2020. So we can bring safety, respect, and honor back to the Cal County. We will never be a premier place like we love. But I can tell you this, we can be a safe place, and we can make it to the point where they come back when the, when the drug business and everybody want to come back to the cab, they'll think twice. You got a strong sheriff leading your community. Imagine how far we can go. Carl Mobley, Sheriff 2020, thank you. Well, good evening. I am Commissioner Greg Adams, District 7 Super Commissioner. I'm honored to be able to serve the people of DeKalb County in that seat, and it's a pleasure what I do for the citizens of DeKalb County. I'm a veteran of the United States military. I'm also a former police officer in DeKalb County and reserve deputy sheriff right now for the people of DeKalb County. When I got elected, I was put on a committee called uh, Public Works and Infrastructure. That is a $2 billion budget that I, that I have to oversee. I chair that committee. That means any job that's coming in through the county, they have to come through my committee and we have to approve it or look into the, to, look into the contract. At the same time, I'm also on the ERPS committee, which is Employee Relations and Public Safety. With my experience in public safety, I sort of spearhead and work with uh, Commissioner Marita Davis Johnson to make sure that we are able to get our police officers or our public safety individuals decent pay. People don't know, see last year, Larry Johnson and I introduced legislation asking for a 20% rate. Now with that, we knew we weren't going to get 20%, but the object of, of negotiation allowed them to get 12.1 all the way up to 16.9. On top of that, they got to get out. They got to raise. They got to raise this money for the police. When you say all the police are underpaid, I don't dispute that. I don't dispute it by any means. Should they make more money? Absolutely. I agree that they should make more money. But with this flux, or well, with this with this new budget that CO introduced, and six six of the board members voted to pass this budget. Well, we're giving the police officer a three percent raise, and every employee in the cab count. So what people don't know, because they hear somebody over here talking, you really need to know the facts. I'm first hand there, my feet are on the ground, and I'm working and I'm working and I'm pushing to make things possible for our people in the cab count. Public safety is an issue. However, we brought in a new public safety director to help mitigate some of the problems. It is a morale problem. When you have a commander that does not respect his officer, it is a morale problem. It is a pay problem. When we cannot just say we're going to give every police officer $50,000, it is a problem. But at the same time, we're working hard to improve the lives and livelihood of everybody that lives in the Cab County. But our focus, most definitely, we're going to take care of our employees. So as it runs down to it, we're looking out for our employees. We're looking out for all the citizens of the Cab County. This is the first board of commissioners that approved the spots. That spot is going to bring in $636 million. We have went into an agreement with all the cities of the Cab County. Y'all hear me talk. A problem that has been for years where the board of commissioners and the mayors of the city don't even come together. But we all came together. We all agreed to work. And in that spot, we're going to repair the roads, not fix potholes. We're going to apply money to public safety, for fire, for PD, for animal control. We're doing everything we need to do to move the Cab County forward. There are seven commissioners. Each one have a different mindset. We don't agree on everything, but we come to the bargaining table and we sit and we talk and negotiate. What can we do? It's not about me. It's about you. It's not about me. It's about the Cab County. My heart is to Cab County. Served 10 years on the street as a police officer. I didn't have to go get reserved. I didn't have to go get sworn in as a deputy sheriff. But I care. I fight. 
When you call, I answer. You send an email, I respond. This is how committed I am. Up late at night, early in the morning, trying to take care of the problems of the cab County. Working with great commissioners like Larry Johnson, a pioneer, 16 years in the industry, to move this county forward. Together we stand, divided we fall. Let's work together. Let's stand together. Remember, Greg Adams, a man that don't mind working and who hasn't his life and time for the service of the cab county. You want to donate? Go to greggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggreggregg
So if given that opportunity, that is what I will do for DeKalb County. You give me an opportunity, and I'll make you proud. Thank you. Who wants to say so to you tribe? I am Dijon Acosta, and I'm running for the Cap County School District Board of Education District 6. See, my, my, my story started when my mom moved down to the Cap, the wonderful the Cap County of uh, Georgia at the age of 27. Having the opportunity to raise seven kids on her own, crying out for help each and every day. But with the grace of God and with the help of our community, I can honestly say, we all made it. See, my mom didn't have the opportunity to graduate college. And my dad didn't have the opportunity to pass sixth grade. But each and every day in that house, they instilled the value of education. Now all her five sons graduate from one of the top schools. Morehouse College, Atlanta Tech, and me and my twin brother follow the same path, Kennesaw State University. I'm a proud of Cat County, I should say. Because I started my journey in pre-K all the way up to the mighty Dan High School. And that's where I found my high school sweetheart and my beautiful daughter, Chastity DeCosta. <laughs> After graduating from Kennesaw State with a sociology degree, my concentration was criminology, I then found a need that there was issues that we were dealing with here in my county, in our county. In fact, watching on the news that the Cab County is the hood. My friends from Kennesaw, Marietta, at the time were scared to come back and visit me because of what they seen found out that there was a need. Started teaching in the cab. Started teaching human anatomy and physiology and science at Middle Grove High School, high school students. Ordering them to make sure you must do something. After matriculating myself through the, through the system, I was able to have the great opportunity to work under two leaderships, two great leaderships. That's CEO Michael Thurman and also the current superintendent, Dr. Stephen Green. I worked in human capital management in which I had the opportunity to assist with hiring qualified teachers and staff. And if you go to HR, they will say the cost went out and beyond for every last key, from the custodians to the full services to the teachers. Because I had the opportunity to do what I needed to do for our residents. These are still our people. They founded a great nonprofit organization called the Cab Kids Project, in which we still continue to build up leaders as we continue to grow. See, my thing is, I must instill the wisdom from the wise. It's an honor. Thank you so much. In order to use my happy feet to keep on going. And bridging the gap is my motto. Because when I, once I leave that seat, somebody else will regain high school is going to take it. See, the journey, nobody told me it wasn't going to be easy. Nobody told me it wasn't going to be easy. But I thank God Almighty that I had the opportunity to be raised with a twin brother. Because I understand what, what my brother's keeper mean. 2014, till this day, the President Obama had one last initiative, very important to our community. And that was called My Brother's Keep and Our Sister Keep. See, we established that program with the help of the board, with the help of the regional superintendent, to rebuild the minds and the development of our youth, because we all know what we're dealing with. See, bridging that gap, bridging that gap means that we got to be able to reach our children in order for our teachers to teach our children. Every day in this community, for the last five years, I worked hard at the graduation. And I'm going to continue to rise and continue to make sure that the Cat County, make sure that the Cat County is the best place for anyone to live. My focus, my focuses are mental health in our schools, 
Not only our children, but for our staff. We have to come, come together and figure this out. How can we provide this for our families and our children and our parents and our teachers? Uh -huh. I'm Dijon DeCosta, and I'm working for the Cat County School District School Board of Education, District 6. And remember, me and my twin is in it together. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we want to first start by thanking the NCNW DeKalb chapter for sponsoring this event. I'm a long time member and I know that Derek is about business so let me go ahead and uh, finish up my five minutes. <laughs> my name is Courtney Johnson and I am the Chief Judge here in the Superior Court of DeKalb County. I have served as a judge for the last eight years. I preside over felony criminal cases and also civil cases including cases involving contract disputes and complex domestic matters involving divorce, child support, and child custody. I also serve as one of the judges on the DeKalb County Accountability Court Program. The DeKalb County Accountability Court Program is a program that includes the Drug Court, the Mental Health Court, and the Veterans Court. I currently preside in the Drug Court, which is a two-year judicially supervised alternative sentencing program for defendants whose criminal behavior is driven by addiction. And I became involved in that program shortly after I took the bench about seven years ago. And I'm proud to say that we have reduced the recidivism rate in Cap County because of programs like the accountability courts. Prior to taking the bench, I served as an assistant district attorney also in the Cap County for six years prosecuting serious felony cases. I began my career as an advocate for victims of domestic violence in the DeKalb County Solicitor General's Office. And thereafter, I became an assistant solicitor prosecuting misdemeanor <coughs> cases. I have served the citizens of this county for the last 17 years. I'm proud to say that I run a very efficient courtroom as the judges in the Superior Court handle about 1,000 cases a year. I am proud to say again that I run a very efficient courtroom and I would invite all of you to come to my courtroom and to see what kind of courtroom I actually run, to see the way that I handle cases. It is as important for a judge to know the law as to be able to apply the law in a fair and impartial manner and that is what I do each day on the bench. I am asking for your support and your vote on May 22nd because I want to continue to serve the citizens of the Cab County. I have always treated those who appear before me, whether as a prosecutor or as a judge, with fairness, dignity, and respect. And that is what I will continue to do in Division I of the Superior Court. So I'm asking again for your support and your vote on May 22nd. Please go to my website to learn more about me, JudgeCourtneyJohnson.com. Thank you. Everyday lives. 
but they can also do harm. Don't believe me? Ask Jan Hankins. Jan is a defense attorney who is forced to pee on herself in court when my opponent refused to allow her to go to the West Wing. Let me repeat, a judge refused to allow an attorney to go to the West Wing. That action is currently the subject of a judicial investigation, judicial ethics investigation. Our own Ambassador Young said his experience in that court, and he said this to the AJC, and he also repeated it to me. He said that he had been before some of the meanest and toughest judges across this country, but never before had he felt so disrespected as when he was in Judge Johnson's court. Now that defense attorney deserved better, Ambassador Young deserved better, and Cap deserves better. Now when you go into the details of the money that it cost the, the citizens of DeKalb County and just one decision by my opponent was unanimously overturned by the Georgia Supreme Court. And when you say unanimously overturned, that means that all the judges agreed. They overturned it because of judicial error. Now, the, the, the decision itself was embarrassing enough but it in fact cost the citizens of Cab County $1.1 million. So, I think the Cab deserves that. So if you think it's not okay for judges to disrespect people in the courtrooms, if you think it's not okay to, to be handed a $1.1 million bill for no reason at all, then you agree that the Cab deserves that. So if I make one second, I'm going to ask you to go to the polls and make that message loud and clear. Again, I'm to that hope well, and I offer myself up to you. My years of experience practicing law, my years on the bench to serve as your next judge in the Cap Superior Court Division One. Thank you. Thank you, Jack Nealon. I am running for Division Seven of the Cap Superior Court. Uh, that is an open seat currently held by Judge uh, uh, Corsi. And uh, Judge Corsi has been on the bench for approximately 36 years. And I tell folks that I've been in the United States for 36 years, so he was born mm -hmm. in the bench for me. <laughs> <laughs> 18 of those years, I have been connected with DeKalb County one way or the other. I started out in the DeKalb Solicitor's Office in 2000 as an Assistant Solicitor General, uh, where I practiced for two years. I briefly went to the Fulton County DA's Office and returned to DeKalb County in 2003 where I was an assistant district attorney in Superior Court until 2013. Uh, while I was the uh, ADA in uh, the County Superior Court, I tried a whole host of very serious matters. Okay? Sexual assaults, homicide cases. In fact, a lot of times when the office found the need to look for which lawyers to put on particular cases, I touched upon or came upon those cases. In 2005, I was selected as co counsel to try a very serious case of a stepfather that had been raping his 11 year old daughter, who gave birth. The baby disappeared. I don't know if you all remember Lake McAfee of Panda Road. He was drained. That was one of the cases that I tried. We got a conviction of a murder, a murder charge without ever finding the body of the baby. Okay? That was one of my cases. In 2009, Again, the office selected me to try an even more serious matter, a triple homicide case out of life for him. A father that killed his wife and twin babies with a hammer. <laughs> no. And in the spots, killed all three of them. Again, I was co counsel on that case. Again, we got a conviction. Okay. Those are some of the matters that I've tried over the years. I left Cap County in 2013 briefly. I became a, uh, a defense lawyer. I have my own practice in Decatur. And then in 2014, I was appointed as a municipal court judge in the city of Lycolonia. And I'm currently the chief judge in the city of Lycolonia. By being a chief judge in Lycolonia, I am designated as a state court judge where I try regular criminal cases, civil matters. I've tried a whole host of cases. I had seven jury trials last year in state court. One of the things I tell folks in all my experiences as a prosecutor, a defense lawyer, and as 
to judge is that I've seen, I've heard, and I've done. Some of the things I've seen, I, I, I put it in a very simple manner. I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly. That is what the system is about. The good. Sometimes the system ropes the good into being bad. They're not bad people. Okay? Folks who have drug addictions. Folks who need treatment. We try to use the criminal justice system to punish. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. We've all seen that. We need to make sure that those people are placed back in the category of good, not being bad. Okay? There are some folks that are bad. Those are the folks that disturb our communities on a daily basis. The kids, the knuckleheads, who break into homes, break into cars, okay? they violate our rights. Sometimes those kids do it. And if it's a one-time thing, let's see whether we can bring them back good, bring them back, reintegrate them into society. Because if we don't, they don't turn ugly. The ugly cases are the ones I've told you about, you've already heard, and they came to that nearly for Superior Court Judge, Division 7. Thank you. I love you. Yeah. My name is Roger Bridges, and I'm running to serve as your next Superior Court Judge. And that key word for me is serve. I've had the privilege to serve in this community for over 18, 20 years in different capacities, whether it's been in public health, uh, as a public defender, or whether it's actually been as, as a judge for over 13 years. As a, as a judge for over 13 years, as a full-time judge, one of the things I did is work uh, tirelessly in the court to make the court better. I presided over thousands of cases. In that presiding over thousands of cases, I created programs for the court to make our community safer and better. One of the programs I, I created actually reduced the recidivism in the court, or repeat offenders in our court, in, in our community. It actually saved U.S. taxpayers money. Uh, I've also practiced law. I practiced law for over 18 years. I practiced law in uh, both civil and criminal cases. And I've also handled uh, cases in state court and federal court. My passion, though, is serving our community. I spent a lot of time serving our community. Uh, in 2004, as a judge, I recognized that many of the people that came before me looked like me and probably was me at some point in time as a young age. So I created my own nonprofit organization called Positive Peer. That group worked at, with at risk youth to turn their lives around. We mentored the youth, and I would like to say that I would like to say that we were more successful than failures, but those one or two success stories that we have turned out very well. We had a young lady that actually went into the military and actually went into law school becoming pregnant in high school. So we work very hard to turn the community around. I'm also involved in the Lions Club. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's one of the largest service communities in the world, not just the nation, in the world. We go to high schools, we get visions to, to low-income individuals. We also clean up the community. Uh, if you go to Dresden Park, we just recently built a monument to our fallen police officers. Uh, Dresden Park is in Shannon. I'm also a member of 100 Black Men. In that organization, we mentor young youth. We have our leadership academy, which I'm a part of. I spend my every Wednesday, I spend it at school reading to the children. Uh, in addition, I'm also part of a group called Interfaith Children Group. In that group, we fought anti-human trafficking. We work to make the education system better. And we also work to make the Georgia families better. Those are just a few of the big organizations that I can name that I'm a part of that I'm working in the community. I'm not going to take the first five minutes. I hope I miss. I'm not a politician. I don't need to talk to a blue face. So I'm going to tell you, Roger Bridges is DeKalb. That's Roger Bridges for DeKalb.com. That is my web page if you want to actually read some more about it. Uh, in addition, I want to thank the organizations that brought this forward today. We know that women are the soul of the community, and without you all, this all wouldn't be possible. I'm a proud mother, I'm a proud mother and a brother of five sisters, so I appreciate your commitment and your contribution. Once again, Roger Bridges, the right choice, the right experience for the Cab County Superior Court Judge, May the 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for coming out. That means that you are interested and you are invested in this county just like I am. My name is Letitia Deer Jackson, and I'm ready for the Cab County Superior Court to succeed Judge Corsi. It is an open seat. <coughs> right now, I'm going to tell you, let's count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Five facts about Letitia Deer Jackson. I am a proud spelling graduate. I am invested in my community. I have served in several community service organizations for over 
20 years, including Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, including leadership at CAF, where I have served for the past 12 years as the leadership at the CAF community, um, community open house chairperson, as well as the membership selection committee chair. I have also been a proud member of Ray Hope Christian Church, where I served in leadership there over the youth, young adult, and college students. I am also a current municipal court judge. I am the president of the Council of Municipal Court Judges, which means that I am over 368 cities and all the judges that sit in them throughout the state. As a member and as the president of the Council of Municipal Court Judges, I have worked directly with the Governor's Council of Criminal Justice Reform to advance, and I am proud to say that there is legislation that has passed on misdemeanor bail reform. I am also for four things that I want to do as your next Superior Court Judge. Streamline criminal cases. So that means that we can get people back to work for those level, low level offenders, get them out of the jail and keep the jail and the prisons open for those that deserve to be there. I want to have specialized cases for your criminal and civil. So, so many times on TV we hear about all the bad and the ugly that we see on the Cab County, but there's so much more to the court. There are families that are in distress that they have guardian ad litem for. You also have civil cases where there are lawsuits. I want to create more time for those cases. I want to utilize technology so that we can streamline all of the non-criminal cases. Three, I have served in three different courts, including over two counties. I have sat in three municipal courts, which would include Stone Mountain, Lithonia, as well as the city of East Point. I have sat for nine of the elected, elected state court judges that you elected, handling all types of matters and cases. In fact, I am sitting for one of the judges this week. I am the only candidate that has sat in superior court, meaning I have done the job for which I am seeking your vote for to be. Two, I have made history twice. I have served, and I am serving for the past 10 years as a judge in the city of Stone Mountain. Ten years ago, I became the first female judge in the city of Stone Mountain. Seven years ago, I became the first female chief judge in the city of Lithonia. One, there's only one Letitia on the ballot. Mm -hmm. I am Letitia Deer Jackson. I am the only candidate that is ready to come day one to handle your cases because I have not only served as a judge, I have served as a lawyer, criminal defense attorney, prosecutor, family law attorney, contract attorney, certified guardian ad litem, and handle property matters. The one candidate for your choice, Letitia Deer Jackson. For more information, you can go to Letitia, the number four judge.com. Thank you.